On 7th of April this year, the collapse of one bank sent jitters through the Kenyan banking sector. That bank was Chase Bank, a bank that had established itself as a jewel among small and medium-sized enterprises in the country. A number of those cases were largely unexpected, especially um, after Imperial Bank um, received a collapse. Then came Chase Bank. We absolutely had unforeseen that. It caused a lot of ripples um, in the banking sector. At the time, the retail bank was ranked 11th out of 43 commercial banks with a total asset base of 142 billion shillings. The central bank cited liquidity problems as the main reason for placing the mid-sized lender under receivership for a period of one year. Interesting to note, Chess Bank, which prides itself as the relationship bank, became the third financial services provider to go under in a span of less than nine months since August 2015, with Dubai Bank being the first to hit the murky waters. Chess Bank had posted a profit of 2.3 billion shillings in 2014, only to record a loss of 742 million shillings the following year. This eroded the confidence that many Kenyans had in small banks, triggering a shift to the so-called larger banks. Going to the big, the large, big, the T1 banks, the KCBs, the Cobb banks, the Barclays, Stanchard, uh, because there's a perception that these banks seemed a bit more stronger yeah, than the T1, uh, sorry, and the T2, than the T23 banks. And one of the biggest consequences of this was the flight, what we call the flight to safety. We saw a lot of um, depositors moving their money from the small, uh, the tier two and the tier three banks, and pushing their money towards the larger tier one banks. And this has caused a lot of uh, funding crisis for the small banks, which is still up there. A bit of it is still there up to date. Since then, it has not been business as usual. Around the investors, they very worried about these banks. They're quite careful. Um, the kind of engagement they're having in these banks. And now they're more, um, they look at things with, 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 with another eye. They comb it uh, uh, um, with the tooth. Né? I mean. By the time of its collapse, Chess Bank had a total of 62 branches countrywide, serving about 170,000 account holders, while commanding a 3% market share in Kenya's banking sector. Focus has now shifted to the measures put in place by the regulator Central Bank of Kenya to prevent banks from going under. Following the fall of Chess Bank, CBK instructed auditors to probe IT systems when conducting checks. The regulator has also availed a facility to banks and microfinance institutions that come under liquidity pressures through no fault of their own. But is this enough? So if you have that surveillance more regularly and obviously concentrate on the right metrics that tells you whether a bank is doing well or not, and that's, 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 that's a good way. But those decisions should be made on objective criteria and not necessarily on, on, uh, on, on, on any personal relationship one way or the other. I think what I like more is uh, how the market has reacted to it and how they have been kept under, under control in terms of the fact that um, uh, the impact is not affecting the whole, you know, the whole sector. There were a bit of, um, you know, um, challenges, liquidity um, movement from some specific banks into others, and therefore the banks that had lost liquidity were going through a bit of a challenge. But I think over time that has smoothened out, and now we are back on a, on a, on a, on a smooth operation, you know, path. What one they can do is one is, I think, to enforce to a, a great extent um, corporate governance practices. This is one of the biggest issues. I think I'm yet to see a bank failing, in, a bank in Kenya failing because of bad business model. Banks in Kenya have historically have failed because of lack of effective corporate governance. I think this is the one area that I, I should actually, going in 2017, I expect more work around this, especially coming from the central bank. I think they need to tighten a bit more. So what next for the relationship bank? 
What will it take for us to see the Chase Bank brand once again? We're likely to see them. Number one, it requires goodwill out of the central bank. And I can see the goodwill. I think central bank wants, really wants these brands to, to come back. The only way to do that, as I say, is create good bank out of, this, out of these names and offer them to potential cities. Kenya Commercial Bank, the receiver manager of Chase Bank, is confident that Chase will not need to stay under receivership for an entire year, having shown signs of recovery. But for this, only time will tell. Denis Otieno, Citizen TV.